You're listening to The Brand Compass, conversations to navigate your way to building a brand fit for purpose and poised for success. Here's your host, Shelley Rosland. Hello there, my friend, and we are back. Thank you for choosing to spend your time with us today. As you know, this is the place where we get into the nitty gritty of where your brand, and more specifically, your personal brand, meets the humans you serve. I'm Shelley, your host on this conversational journey. And today we're going to stick with the podcasting theme that we've had for the last two episodes. So in episode 49, you would have heard me chatting to Mark Franklin. And we were talking on that episode all about what makes a good podcast show host. And then episode 50, I shared the four main overarching purpose types that I think podcast shows have. So go back and listen to those if you haven't yet. But now today, I thought what we do is we flip the coin back to the meaty part of podcasting and the conversations we have on the microphone. And I want us to look at the guests on a podcast show. Now, this is important for you as a subject matter expert or service provider who wants to be a bit more visible or be noticed a bit more. So guesting on podcast shows is a great opportunity for you to express yourself and your personal brand and also to demonstrate the genius that's living inside that gorgeous brain of yours. So to help me chew the fat on this topic, I don't want to actually eat the fat. I've asked Imogen Jones to join me, as you already know her, as the third musketeer in our agency business and also a personal brand strategist. What I won't do is go into a long introduction, but she did come on the show on episode 38 where we talked all about creating offers that actually solve the right problem for the right people. Let's get on to today's topic. Hello, Imogen. Hello, Shelley. Thank you so much for having me back. Right. So we've talked a lot about this topic, right, off microphone. (laughs) Like we hop on about this quite a bit. So I thought maybe our listeners might enjoy being a fly on the wall as we as we chat a little bit more about what we think about our guests on podcast shows. So you and I are like voracious podcast listeners ourselves, right? So, and you're also, just for everybody listening, Imogen is my podcast show manager for this show. So let's maybe start our topic thinking about us as listeners, you know, digesting and consuming those podcast episodes. What do we think, you and me as listeners, what do we think qualifies a guest on a show as good? What does good look like for you, Emma? Ah, like you said, (laughs) I do listen to a lot of podcasts. I've had a little break over the summer and not listened to quite so many, but I do love listening to various ones. So from more chatty, topical, and then more, I guess, I want to say work-based, a little bit more educational with the branding as well, like the marketing and things. So for me, it is uh, for a guest, if they are answering the question. So if they're actually paying attention to what the host is asking them Mm. and taking some time to think about the answer and articulating it really well. So that's also not trying to potentially or put in too much of their own agenda into that answer and actually listening to the question and answering mm. it openly and honestly. I think that works really well. Mm, definitely. Not giving closed answers. I think there's nothing more frustrating listening <laughs> to a guest, isn't it? The host is like trying to pull blood from a stone and the guest goes, yes, no. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. I think it's when um, I think storytellers work really well on, yeah. as guests because they not only give the answer, but they they explain how they've got to that answer. So the the way they get there is like, well, a relationship I had or a conversation I had previously, we discussed this and we went around this little mm. rabbit hole. And that is why the, my answer is this. So it it, yeah. it feels nicer and it flows nicer when you do get those open conversations. It also allows the host then to pick at those little threads of conversation and yeah. go deeper into that topic. I suppose we also want them to keep the stories relevant, right? I have listened to episodes <laughs> where a guest just gets completely sidetracked, goes off on one on the story, and the host is kind of sitting there go, how the heck do I bring this back? Well, it's how the he- yeah, how, how do you bring it back? But also I've heard um, guests go, um, sorry, what, what was the question? <laughs> And you're like, I thought the same. I didn't know where you're going with that. Like, but I'm pleased you realised you'd got further down. It's good if they could pull themselves back. Like, that is a good guess. <laughs> I suppose that leads us also mm. onto the, um, like, for me, it's also being gracious and not argumentative. I know you've got an example oh, of yeah, something was... you've listened to recently. <laughs> 
And I and it's not to say that I don't think you should disagree because I don't think everybody can disagree all the time or do, I don't think everybody can agree all the time. I, I mean, but I was listening to Simon Sinek and he had a guest on and they disagreed on a point and it was getting quite heated. And I know it's... <laughs> I know it's one of my values is is harmony and keeping everything, everybody have getting on and being getting on well, yeah. and argumentativeness and shouting and well, not that it was shouting, it wasn't shouting. Just but the it was, tone was getting it quite. It was getting strong. quite heated, and I was getting a little bit uncomfortable as that listener, being that fly on the wall, being in that conversation. I was like, oh, um, I <laughs> shall I shall I leave? <laughs> Do you want me to come back when you've um, sorted you've this made out? friends again? <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, it, it's great that they they had that relationship and they they've known each other for years and they they could they, do that. They could appreciate that they just disagreed on a point, but it did feel a little uncomfortable for me. <laughs> but I mean, it worked well as a podcast. But yeah, for me, I think if you're going to be joining, I think if you're going to be on a podcast and join as a guest, appreciating and having empathy for that. Going, I appreciate that's your view, but my view is more like mm. this and the reason I've got to my view is because of these things and like I say yeah. agree to disagree I guess yeah just like being an adult <laughs> <laughs> just say, I don't think everybody listening wants to hear us argue though some people thrive on that but yeah like you um, that's not my thing at all I think the other thing about listening is is mm. the audio quality is always really important isn't it they always say with podcasting if there's one thing you want to get right it's your audio and I think sometimes Guests don't always prepare their space enough. And I know I've listened to some episodes of some of the big shows as well where children are running around in the background or because I don't necessarily watch podcast shows. I don't watch the videos. I listen to the audio. So everything gets picked up, right? So like, couldn't you even just lock your kids somewhere (laughs) with an (laughs) iPad and keep the room quiet? Because also they get distracted, and like you're trying to listen to the conversation, they get distracted and then they're like, oh, sorry, where, where was I? You know, little Sally ran in with the dog or something. Yeah, I guess with those, it's, uh, I've said just as a guest on this podcast, Shelley, I have done the same. I've got my, my partner's at home, Dan, yeah. he's working and I've gone like, okay, can you put your headphones in for calls, please? I'm closing both the doors and the dog is downstairs because yes. I don't want, again, for myself as well, I don't want to be you distracted because it makes me a bit anxious when I think, oh God, I was I didn't listen to the question there. Or, <laughs> That's great. Like, what am I like, going to say now? What am I going to reply? <laughs> like, how will I get back to that? <laughs> oh God, I think that brings us nicely on to actually flipping <laughs> flipping to to the other side of, mm. of us being on the business side to podcasting. Mm. So us being in, you know, this show is an independent podcast show. I'm the host, you're the, the manager and producer. So let's look at it from that perspective now and, and talk about guests. So what, I mean, I'll just kind of add to whatever you're mm-hmm. saying, you're going to have a say as well, but what what is it that you look for when thinking, because you do come help, help me come up, we're in like the same for everybody listening. Mm-hmm. You know, we're obviously in business together, we're, we're friends, we kind of listen to similar types of things, we're in the same kind of community. So you do help me think about the guests that would be good to come onto my show. So what are the, the standout factors for you, also getting to know me and what I like now? What would run in somebody's favour to actually be invited onto a show that you manage, whether it's ours or, you know, somebody else's, like a client's? Yeah, so I think... It's being very clear on what they're an expert in. So having being able nice. to d- translate mm. that quite nicely going, like I see what they're doing. I see they're doing that really beautifully. And that works really well with what you're doing. So the conversations you're having, Shelley, and going, right, the, these kind of peoples will add to that and they will give a different perspective and give your listeners something else to think about nice. as well. So those kind of things. So those are the kind of things that I listen out for. Or if I've heard another podcast that I think, oh, that person came across really well what kind of industry are they in what kind of Mm. and then finding guests around that as well Mm. so you're getting I say inspiration from from other things you're listening to and Mm. then finding guests that and the nuances and the nuances isn't it because I don't mind having other people Mm. do what we do in our business (laughs) come on to the show because we all have a different nuance or something else to add to a topic so I wouldn't necessarily say oh no I can possibly have that person on the show because they also run an agency that does that or that do you know what I mean because also 
and I know we say about niching down, but it might be that on a specific topic or a specific mm. avenue of that, they are much more knowledgeable because they've dug a lot deeper on that part of the conversation. And mm. as a fuller um, offering, it's good to have those deeper conversations with people that know what they're talking about and mm-hmm. that they're articulate and they know how to put that across, but it also helps educate the listener then and gives mm. the listeners other avenues okay, to so, explore. So that's them in terms of topic there. Are there any like technical or practical things you're like, oh God, okay, I'm going to choose this guest <laughs> over the other one, even though they're both good? I guess say, I guess this depends as if for a good guest, depends on how you're getting the guests. So I know Shelley, when we're working together, you prefer to approach people Mm-hmm. Uh, that you know will work well for you, but uh, there are other people that will be appre- approaching hosts to go, I am an expert in this, and this is why I think I'd be really good to have a chat with you and to um, mm. get on the podcast with you. Mm. So being prepared in having, I want to say like a brief, like a an introduction to people, to the host to go, this is who I am. This is what I'm an expert in. These are the kind of conversations I could have with you to um, help your listeners along the same journey that you're putting them through. Mm. So, I mean, I know that works quite nicely with our the personal brand work that we do in mm. that understanding deeply mm. who you are and what you have to offer to be able to put yourself forward for hosts. Mm. So I know it's a bit different from the way you approach it because you are already kind of looking in on people and understanding who they are. So in a, you're trying to, you're looking at them from the outside. So you've already discovered them. You know mm. that they're great. You've heard them speak or mm. you've heard them somewhere or somebody's introduced you to them. So from that avenue, I guess not having a prep sheet, but having their um, LinkedIn bios really mm. tight and really, really concise and sharing content that echoes what they're putting themselves forward for. Mm-mm. So I guess preparation, putting yourself forward as that, as the right person. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think tw- I was trying to count yesterday and prep for today. So I think I'm up to about 20 guests now uh, in, so far on 50 mm-hmm. episodes. So, yeah, I do like to pick guests also that would suit me much like you. I'd rather have an open, generous, mm. gracious, <laughs> harmonious conversation. So I wouldn't necessarily go for the types of people that are combative or argumentative mm-hmm. just for the sake of being arguments because I my I, my anxiety can not handle that in a live situation recording with you. I can't I'll just curl up and die or implode one of the two but and I just try and pick people that will contribute to the conversation but they won't necessarily be the the go-to expert on something so so while let me just pick a random topic say like LinkedIn mm-hmm. we know lots of LinkedIn specialists right but I would gravitate towards the one that I think that I could, like you said, there's an element of that nuance of actually what are their values, how do they operate, the kinds of things they talk yeah. about. Is it a nice compliment to how I think or does it sit nicely with everything else we're talking about? So I kind of pick people because of that. I really hate being cold, cold approach. I mean, I don't do well. <laughs> But they're usually spam ones. They're not actual real people. <laughs> See, but then that's the when the preparation, isn't it? That you need to be able to yeah. articulate if you are going into somebody cold yeah. and go, I love your show. I love everything you stand for. I'd love to be a guest. I would be a good guest because of these reasons. Not like I'd be a good guest because I want to be a guest because that's just, it's not fair on the host either because you're not giving them the time of day and you're not giving them the respect that they need. Or no, I do like to try and pick <clears throat> people who already have expressed themselves or are quite comfortable with expressing themselves, either on video or audio. It helps me figure out if they're going to sound okay or if the tech is going to work because a lot of our recording for our interviews are all remote. We don't do in-person recording. So it just helps me just a little bit to know that it's going to make my journey a little bit smoother. (laughs) (laughs) If if they're already clear with that, because I've had with clients, so I've never had this issue, but I've had with a client's show where somebody she wanted to bring on the show, um, you know, great, you know, great person to talk to off screen and on video, on audio. But as soon as she clicked record, the person just kind of contracted and like their whole like character, like just dimmed. And she's like, I didn't even know what went on. I said, I don't know what happened, Uh, but I've never had that happen. So I think to mitigate stuff like that, it might be useful to know if people are are used to 
I used to, yeah. So I guess yeah. it's a demonstration. I guess some people have to start from somewhere, but I guess videoing exactly. themselves yes. and having those shorts and things at least give you that confidence that yes. they know how to present themselves on a camera yes. and how to be. But I think that's another one of the preparation things that I would suggest not obviously putting yourself forward, but have being prepared for the technology and um, giving yourself time to familiarize yourself with the processes because different people use different bits of tech. People uh, different hosts are going to want to use different um, softwares and things like that. So having giving yourself some time before you've joined the meeting or just before you've joined the podcast to make sure everything's set up right, make sure that you're calm and collected and you're not panicking that oh, I can't hear myself through there mm. and those kind of things because you don't want to have that fraught start because yeah. I think it doesn't get does, it doesn't well it doesn't to start. Start. <laughs> I think that leads us, maybe we talk a little bit then about, you know, maybe we can give our listeners some tips of who actually, they they want to present themselves well as guests and they, they potentially want to go for a few more opportunities to be on people's shows. Maybe we maybe we think of a few tips to, to help them prepare themselves to actually approach somebody to go on a show. So do you want to go first and then yeah, I can just kind of done. add to it? Like I said, I think we probably touched on it a few times now, is that that preparation is key. So if you're wanting to put yourself forward as a guest, yeah, having, I guess, the tech ready, be comfortable that you've got everything sorted out for that. You don't want to have audio issues or uh, come across as grainy when they've come got a beautiful setup. And if you're going to do video as well as um, audio, oh mm. having that setup that, like I think we discussed a little bit earlier, checking your background and making sure that you don't have anything untoward stuck on a shelf or, you know, messy bits in the background. But I think it, echoing back to the, the preparation before is, you know, when you're putting yourself forward, having a nice bio that they can then introduce you and how to introduce you and having those bits already. Yeah, and just knowing that you're actually you know, you will be relevant for the show. The amount of times people have approached me and have actually never listened to an episode uh, or they just neatly pull a title of an episode and go, oh, I listened to this one. And I think, you know, actually, you know, I'd be great <laughs> for this. And I could, you know, I'm a 50, what, are, what did I have? Oh, I'm a seven figure coach that helps businesses to blah, 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 blah. I was like, that's not what the show's about. That's yes. not what I talk about. So no. <laughs> Yes, so again, but then that's about, yeah, again, it's about respect, isn't it? That is, I mm. guess, cold calling in that the same way as you get those LinkedIn DMs about like, oh, hi, it's great to connect. Here mm. is something about me. You're like, that's not, mm. not, podcasts are about conversations and about getting down to the nitty gritty and learning a little bit more about each other and about processes and expanding knowledge is the reason I do mm. it. I like to learn. So yeah, don't put yourself out there as a, a copy and paste email. Think mm -hmm. about the think about the podcast you want to be a guest on, and think of them really, really quite well because it's part of your marketing strategy. I guess at the end of the day, if you're trying to put yourself out there to get white more widely known, to put yourself in front of different audiences, these conversations need to flow. And if yeah, you're there definitely. on your own agenda to put your own thing forward, mm -hmm. it will come across. In the mm. same way as what we were saying about as a listener going, oh, okay, they didn't answer the question there. They answered it with what they mm. wanted. It doesn't, mm. it's, it's not a great listening experience and it's not a good conversational experience uh, for the host. And I, if I don't know the guests, I've only had one or two opportunities where I didn't personally know them really well. The things that I looked for was their LinkedIn profile would be up to date. Yeah. They've got some kind of online presence that I can go and see what they actually do. Do they do the thing mm -hmm. that they say they want to talk about? Like you said before, with them actually doing some video and that, that helps me a little bit to kind of preempt would they be okay on <laughs> video. I think if you want to prepare to approach somebody, also say that you would be up for having a conversation about it first before actually recording. Because it, it does surprise me people that actually haven't been on shows very much refuse to have a conversation beforehand. Like, yeah, I could say, it would, I think as a guest, it you want to, you want to know what kind of what the, the mm. way the conversation you wants to go so that you can prepare mm. well enough to join that conversation because mm. you don't want to turn up and the questions then completely blindside you because you haven't mm. thought around it that 
uh, along that line, especially if you're quite new to um, being a podcaster or a guest on podcast shows, mm. understanding the flow and how it works. And that's why you said listening to the podcast already gives you a bit of that insight, like, okay, yeah. I see what they're doing. They, they, This is the kind of flow that they go. They do an introduction mm. and then they have a couple of mm. questions and answers and they hope, you know, those questions and answers hopefully then turn into a conversation. I had a great example where I had Evelyn come on the show, Evelyn Stark. Yeah. Evelyn just kind of knew me tenuously through a community that we both were belonging and she approached me, Scala, you know, I'd like to come on the show or I'd like to chat about coming on the show. And she's based in Boston and she came, she she was right, the topic was fine, Every, everything would sit, sit anyway. But I'd given, and I do this for every guest anyway, I give them a couple of examples of episodes to go and listen to. And if there's a particular one, like when I did the bits about, you know, subject matter uh, expert manifesto, what I thought that meant. And I wanted people to be able to know that and then kind of contribute to it in potentially a conversation. I'd say, can you listen to this one? But here are a couple of other guest ones you can listen to just so you can get a a feeling. And she did do it. And when she came on, bearing in mind, we did do our one-to-one as well, but beforehand, and we set it up and we prepared because Shelley's a planner. (laughs) When she came on, every time we were having our conversation, Evelyn would keep referring back to previous episodes. So she said, oh, you know what, Shelley, actually, when you spoke to Alison O'Leary about this bit and da-da-da-da-da, I was like... You're the one, Evelyn. Like, you're the star. You're, you're the perfect guest. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> and to be fair, her episode is the most downloaded episode I have of my guest so far because also not only was she a good guest coming on the show, she was also prepared to promote it. So it's one of the few guests that I've actually then, because I create collateral, yeah. as you know, yeah. for, for guests to go and because for them it's an opportunity. Like you said, it could be part of their own yeah. marketing strategy. So I think if you can be a good guest, just be prepared to also put some effort in. Well, I think it, I mean, it's time effort ultimately, yes, isn't it? If we're spending time yeah. doing things, it should yeah. fit in with what we're trying to achieve as well as what the, you know, as the host and as a producer, but also both what it's, they're trying to achieve if they're trying to get in front of new audiences or um, share their knowledge and expertise in a different way, then mm. yeah, you need to put in the work and you shouldn't just you know, scattergun approach of just contacting anybody with a podcast because it's not, well, A, it wouldn't be enjoyable, I don't think, to have conversations with people that it's not going to benefit no. either side of you. No. no. So I think, and, yeah. and don't just invite your mates either. That's for podcast show hosts, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because um, sometimes it just doesn't work. <laughs> You know? Okay. Yeah. I guess. Oh, but I think I think we'll do another episode on that, won't we? I think what we'll do is do an episode of our learnings of, yeah. of things that could go wrong and things that do go right. And I think that because that would be probably a pretty good. I think what I'd like to do though, because you know, when Mark came on, what we mm-hmm. did is we did he he shared some episodes, uh, some podcast shows that he liked. So I've just thought of this now, thinking, oh, actually, we could get Imogen because <laughs> I shared Jamie Lang's Great Company. I guess yeah, I've actually started listening to that now. Did you? Yeah. And what did you think? I yeah, I was quite surprised. I did. I didn't know yeah. the same as you. I didn't know about the candy yeah. kittens because I eat those. They're delicious. <laughs> I didn't know because again, not a reality TV person, so no. do not do not watch any of those things. They're kind of things that I knew happened and they knew they yeah. were on, but I didn't know who was no. in it or anything like that. No. But yeah, listen to his Joe Brand um, episode, and oh. yeah, it was. It was a really nice conversation. It did feel like it was just two friends having a chit chat or over coffee and you were a little fly on the wall listening to that. I really, yeah, I will. Keep <laughs> I've, got listening. The, I've got the taste now. I shall keep listening to that. <laughs> so what, what are yeah. other ones that you would suggest for people? Um, for me, again, or it's that like you've liked. Yeah. in the same sort of vein. It's uh, Jamila Jamil, uh, mm-hmm. her podcast. Again, she gets on people, I guess, that are, I say, famous because they they have she has that kind of reach but again they're quite candid and open conversations and they're top, are tackling some difficult subjects as well so what's the sh- show called or is it in her name I it's can... called i weigh and it started off with right because obviously with women it's you know losing weight or is this oh she's bigger oh she's smaller so it the premise was i weigh the um the benefits i give to my family i weigh the work I do in my community, I weigh so that the weight isn't her, their weight, it's what they weigh in the way that they serve 
themselves, their community or their families. Nice concept. Uh, yeah, so that's how it all started. And now that she's um, obviously quite established, I'm not sure how, how long she's been going on now for, but now she's been having quite, I say, difficult conversations with people. So people that have gone through like domestic abuse or um, drugs or anything like that, how they've come through it and the trials and tribulations, I guess, of of what mm. happened with them. So I enjoy that. It's Some of them are a difficult listen, but she has a lovely way of that question and answer. Mm. She's and a little yeah. sweary, so we're just she's warm. A little, <laughs> she is a little sweary. She's very opinionated, but she's she's lovely. <laughs> I love her. I was trying to think of another one I could suggest. Mm. Oh, gosh. Um, because I do, I do, I flit between, because I don't want, listen to, I know Mark is quite, he's quite loyal, like to the, the art of brilliance. Yeah. So really, I don't do that necessarily because also with some of the big shows, um, I've just noticed that I don't always enjoy every episode. I can't yeah. always pick them because of the guests. Yeah. Yes, I, I'm, I do the same as you. I used to I used to be like Mark when I had only a couple of uh, shows <laughs> in my subscribes list. And now it's every time I log in, there is many, many dots of many how many choices. things. Yeah. So now I have the same as you. I go through and go, oh, I love that. I love that interview or I love that, com- that mm. show. And I love that person. So I will add mm. them to my, my, my to listen list. Mm. But <laughs> I did. So I suppose the only one I probably met, I did mention a bit in the previous mm. episode was the High Performance Podcast. So it's got the two guys, Jake and, oh my goodness gracious, I can't remember okay. their names. I shall put them in the show. <laughs> um, they had Bear Grylls on once and okay. I really enjoyed listening to that because um, they are quite good in terms of their questioning. It's always interesting listening to a show where there's two hosts and then a guest, but they've, they've, They've gotten to the point where they don't talk over each other, thank goodness. I guess, yeah, I guess that's probably some advice as well for uh, guests, isn't it? Understand, understanding when it's your turn to talk and when it's time to listen. Oh, it's really mm-hmm. difficult, I think, when there's three people on the show. But I think yeah. generally when they're uh, been going as long as they have, and they are, they're, to be mm-hmm. fair, they're quite uh, you know professionally produced shows, <laughs> so they've got like a, a whole team um, behind them. But um, I do like listening to some of their episodes because they choose – I choose people quite interesting as well, but they always keep it relevant to what the topic is. Sure. Where sometimes I think with Diary of CEO, CEO, for example, I don't always get it, <laughs> as in why he's asked the person on the show. I think that, yeah, that one's so big now that I, I, think I don't, yeah, it doesn't seem to have a theme or anything. It's The theme seems to be the famous person or the, I the say latest the con- famous person. The latest yes. famous, or, the, or sometimes the it's most the contentious person as oh, well, yeah, yeah. isn't it? It's yeah. like, how are we going to get clicks and likes and and things out of it I guess mm. so, yeah. I think I've just probably grown out of some of some of the things I used to listen to I think but um yeah so I think yeah I'll probably go for the high high performance podcast oh. and it doesn't it's not for athletes <laughs> <It's> not, <laughs> no. I'm not an athlete but they keep the theme of trying to get people to uh define if you like what, high performance what is for them like. yeah. yeah what does high performance look like so while in the beginning because uh, Jake comes from BBC Sports, so he used to be a presenter. Okay. He, I hope I've said his name right too, sorry. <laughs> uh, Damien Hughes, sorry, that's who his, his uh, partner in crime is on that. He used to be BBC Sports presenter. So I think in the beginning, you know, when the show first started, I think it's four years ago now or whatever it is, it was still related to sport and athleticism and F1, you know, uh, motorsport. I guess, yeah. And, yeah. And they've but, probably, yeah. I was going to say the topics do work as a high performance yeah. podcast. Everybody yeah. is high performing in a certain, or not everybody, I guess, or they might not position themselves with that, but people have got high in their game and yeah. will have their own strategies and their own thoughts of what that means yeah. and how they got there. Yeah, so it is quite, and that's how I found Jamie Lang, so I'll be forever grateful <laughs> <laughs> to the boys. Because his episode with them was amazing. Are you like, just, you- yeah, he was not, he wouldn't be my my natural go-to if somebody put him no. forward as Jamie Lang from uh, Made in Chelsea I'd be like no thank you but <laughs> it's not that at all I've been really impressed yeah yeah me too mm. so oh right okay so we got we packed a lot in today I think we still have another episode because we chatted before we came on there's a whole <laughs> yeah. nother there's a whole nother episode that we could do around um, something more related to this topic but we'd love to know what everybody thinks after they've listened to this mm. episode so do you think we've missed anything in terms of 
guests on podcast shows. We've looked at it at a few different mm-hmm. angles. Um, is there anything we've left out? I don't think anything left out. Just reiterating that preparation is key, really. Prepare as much as you possibly can before <laughs> stepping forward into it. But it's very fulfilling and very rewarding. So I do recommend if you mm. enjoy it, go forward. And don't be afraid of the first one. So if you haven't done it yet... You know, just get it over with and do it (laughs) because (laughs) all of this is practice makes perfect, right? You know, you've even gotten better and better at being in front of the camera and microphone, but you've been good at practicing. As well. Yeah, but the first uh, the first live one, I could see that I looked like a rabbit in headlights, and my heart was going, and I was like, oh my word. The important thing is just to be calm and relaxed, isn't it? Because then you can just come out, can't you? So I think, yeah. All right, lovely. So so we shall set about planning the next one. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> we will. <laughs> and that's it for this episode, folks. Thank you so much for joining us. Did that help you to see that picking good guests for your podcast show is actually an art and that you have to put some thought into it? And similarly, if you want to be a guest on a podcast show, Maybe you now have some insight into how a podcast show host thinks and maybe how the producers or the managers think. At least that's the way Imogen and I and Mark think here at Harbour 32. So we really come at this by honing into the fact that we don't want to waste people's time and we want them to come back for more stickiness, as we call it, is probably the most important metric for a podcast show. How many times do people come back again to listen again? And in order for people to do that, you need to build some value and interest into every step of your process of doing a podcast show. So who do you know that could do with hearing this conversation and our insights? Share this episode. You know you want to. Until next time, my friend, stay strong, believe you have value and make good brand decisions. Thank you for listening to The Brand Compass. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to share it with your entrepreneurial friends and help them make good brand decisions. Until next time, let's keep the conversation going at shellyrosland.com.